Just to preface this, I am male and so is my husband. My husband and I met at work and I had trained him and we hit it off straight away. But the problem was we were both married to other people at the time. So we just formed a great friendship. Fast forward a year and a half and I had hit a rough patch with my partner and he hit a rough patch with his partner. We would talk for hours and would offer advice and we would try and save each other's relationships but to no avail. We ended up splitting up with our respective partners a month apart from each other and we took a break from relationships. And we had a great support for each other. Fast forward another year and we started spending pretty much 24-7 together and eventually I had realised that I needed to be with him all the time. One night we sat down in front of the TV at his house and ate dinner. When we finally finished ended up doing the dishes... He grabbed me afterwards and kissed me, and that was the start of our relationship. Making the relationship official. So at this point, we had known each other for about three and a half years. We had moved in together and life was wonderful. And on our four-year anniversary of meeting, he proposed to me and we were married on our fifth year meeting anniversary. Now, I know that sounds weird, but we wouldn't propose or marry on romantic dates. But the way he saw it is those dates were progression dates. The meet date is the date that we officially met and that was symbolic to him. People had huge problems with our relationship, considering we were both straight males. Surprised? Thought so. As it turns out, after many discussions and searching, we are both pansexual. If you don't know what that means, it means you fall in love with the person, nothing else. We had a great relationship. Work was great, we still worked together. He was the head of one department and me another. And we purchased a nice house, had nice cars. Everything in our lives was pretty standard, normal, nothing out of the ordinary. One night I was awoken to him screaming. I woke him up and he said he had a bad dream that someone plucked his soul straight out of his body and had taken over his body and that he was watching from afar. So I settled him down and he went back to sleep. The next few weeks he kept having dreams about his death and that someone was trying to take over his body. It was almost a nightly occurrence but he just couldn't shake it. So, me being some sort of spiritual person, I sought advice from some mediums and clairvoyants and Wiccans, and I had someone come to the house and cleanse it. After the cleanse, the house energy seemed to improve, and things had returned to normal. Husband was happy self again, and we went back to normal life. One day, husband had to go back to work late, so he said he would see me at home. We always took two cars for this reason. I went home, fed the dog, got dinner started and chilled out for a bit before he got home. About an hour later, phone started ringing. It just said unknown caller. So I answered it and it was my husband. And there was a lot of static, but every second or third word it would cut out. So he said, remember, I will always love you. And the phone cut out. He walks in the door about 20 minutes later and I asked him what the phone call was about and he just casually says to me, oh, nothing. So we go into the kitchen and I start getting things ready to serve dinner. I looked at his eyes and they looked weird like they weren't his, but I had put that down to him maybe being tired. So I continued serving dinner. We sat down and ate and nothing out of the ordinary occurred. I do the dishes and then head outside to water the garden while husband has a shower. I noticed his car wasn't there when I went out and I thought, hmm, that's odd. And we both had fairly modern vehicles, reliable, you know. So I go inside and I call out to him and he says he'll be out in a minute. At that moment, there was a knock on the door and it was the police. Sir, we're sorry to inform you, but we found your husband's car down an embankment and unfortunately, he's passed away on impact. I said, no, he's in the shower, you must be mistaken. They looked confused for a moment, then looked behind me and went white as white could be. I turned around and there was my husband standing there, stark naked, with this deranged look on his face, his smile from ear to ear, like he was going to eat us. He then, at lightning speed, flew past me and between the officers, then across the street into the bushland, never to be seen again. The officers had found my husband's body after the accident. Their shock was justified. There was not much left of my husband, well, not in one piece anyway. I was only ever allowed to see his face. The rest of him was unrecognisable. So up until the point that the police were there, this entity looked and acted just like my husband. I mean, I did feel a bit uneasy. I wasn't sure what that was because of, so I just shrugged it off. But when the police were there and I looked at him, he looked like... 
inhumane. He looked like some demon spawn from hell. His smile, and when I say ear to ear, I mean literally his mouth opened up so much that the corner of his mouth on both sides nearly touched his ears. And the teeth, his jaw, also stretched like his whole cheekbones were nothing. And he didn't have them, but he was just mouth and teeth. And his eyes, there was nothing in his eyes, just black, no whites, no colour, no iris pupil, just black. The thing is, I've had a lot of demonic entities in my life and some of the things he would tell me about in the dreams, I should have known, but I just never had them latch onto another person in my life before, only me. So I didn't think anything of it at the time, but looking back on the content of his dreams and just some random things that happened to him, our, our lives and I, I should have just done more. I have for many years tried to ignore these entities as giving them a voice gives them strength. I never thought I would lose someone to them. Now I stay by myself, live a lonely life and I blame myself for his death. From what I heard, the two officers went through years of counselling but one of them took his own life because he couldn't cope and the other one died in unknown circumstances. After the death of my husband due to a demonic entity, I felt the need to share some more stories about these entities that I have had to deal with my whole life. The first instance was when I was four years old. It was the early 80s and I'd only just turned four years old and we'd just moved house from another house in my parents' hometown. And prior to that, we were a good 28 hour drive away from where I was born. We had moved back to my parents' hometown to be closer to my family two years prior. But my earliest memory was the previous Christmas where my older brother and I had received a trampoline for Christmas and then my other memories were of watching movies on our black and white TV from the drive-in movies that was across from our old house. I remember the day we moved in. My parents were so proud because they had purchased this house and it was their first. I think at the time my mum was only 26 or 27 and my dad was in his mid-30s but they were proud nonetheless. I remember the car that we had at the time and I remember it was old and I saw people with these modern cars but I didn't really think about status back then. But this particular incident made me glad that we had an old, solid car. I don't know where we'd just been, but I do remember we were on our way back to our hometown, just my dad and I, and it was an old orange Ford wagon, had a bench seat in the front vinyl trim and had three on the tree transmission for young ones, a manual transmission, stick shift, lever on the steering column. It was a warm day, maybe about 32 degrees, and we were driving back and there was some wheat fields either side of us on the two lane highway. My dad slowed to allow a rabbit to cross the road. The radio was some talkback show and my next memory of that moment was I was buckled into the passenger side seat in the front and I was hanging upside down. The car was on its roof and I could hear my dad talking to someone but the radio was silent. Then the song, I've had the time of my life, Dirty Dancing I think, started playing on the radio. I sat there upside down listening to this song and once it finished I waited for the next song but nothing, nothing else played on the radio. The next thing I know, the car was pushed in its upright position again. My dad thanked the man he was talking to, got in the driver's seat, then started the car, drove out of the field, back onto the highway, and we were on our way home again. But the strange thing is, the radio started up again once my dad turned the car on, and it was halfway through a song. From what I could see, when we got home, there was no damage to the car. My dad told my mum, and my mum was like, oh, so long as the car's okay. My parents weren't really great parents, I'll admit that. After dinner, my brother and I did the dishes, had a bath, and then we got our half an hour TV time before bed, which was at 7.30. There was only three TV channels back then, no remote, and the TV station stopped at midnight. Plus, we had to watch whatever our parents were watching, which was usually an old hospital soap drama. My brother and I went to bed at 7.30 as per usual. We had bunk beds. He slept on the bottom and I was on top bunk, no rails. My brother was three years older than me, so he was seven at the time, and we would usually talk a little bit before going to sleep until my mum and dad came in to tell us to shut up and go to sleep. I usually fell asleep straight away, but this particular night, I was rattled by the car accident. I couldn't remember how we ended up upside down, and that bothered me. I asked my brother what my dad had said happened, and he had no idea. He wasn't listening. I fell asleep eventually, and I remember having a dream about this strange man. It was apparently the man that had helped my dad flip the car, but I hadn't seen the car being flipped as I was inside, but it was like I was watching it from afar like I was watching, waiting for something to happen. And as the person watching, I sensed a child in the car, like I could smell him, like his soul smelled good enough to eat. I woke up scared and I climbed down the bed and climbed to bed with my brother. He didn't wake up and I soon fell asleep again. I awoke to blood curdling screams and it was my brother. He was asking me why I bit him. I replied, I didn't, I don't think I did. At that moment, it seemed like he stopped breathing. Do you see that? He asked. 
I looked in his direction. It looked like a very tall man, taller than the bunk bed, standing in the corner. His breath was like fog as he breathed in and out. His eyes were glowing red and he had a fedora on his head. It was pitch black so we could only see his outline and it looked like he was wearing a cape. I froze and he pointed in our direction, motioning with his index finger for us to come forward. My brother threw off the blanket and got out of bed and started to walk towards him. The man then waved his index finger as if to say, no. Then my brother stepped sideways away from the man and the man pointed at me, motioning me to come closer. I got out of bed and started walking in his direction. Then the room filled with light. My brother had turned the bedroom light on and the man was gone. My brother's back had blood dripping through his pyjamas and I lifted the top to see why and it looked like a dog had taken a chunk out of his back. The next thing I remember is sitting at the dining table having breakfast. I asked my brother about the man and he says, what man? Had I dreamed it? I walked behind him lifting his pyjama top up and nothing, no bite. He asked me what I was doing and I said, well, you got bitten last night. That's why you woke up and that's when we saw the man. He was like, nah, you must have dreamed it. The next night, same routine, but this time I tried to stay awake in fear that the man would come back. I must have dozed off. The next thing I remember is a tightness on my chest. And when I woke up, I looked straight up to the roof and there was the man suspended by the ceiling, staring straight into my eyes and he whispers, I'm coming for you. He breathed heavily and his breath was fog again. But the next thing I remember is waking up and it was daylight. From that night onwards, I saw this man every night, but we would go for a walk in a dark forest, heavy with fog, no leaves on the trees. I think that we did. I eventually stopped fearing the man because I knew I would always wake up in my bed again, but it was hard to explain to my mother why there was dirt in my bed and on my feet.